to introduce myself. I'm Gijs Meijer, so you got it pretty right, Christina. It's a typical <laughs> Dutch name with a hard g- so it's a bit difficult for people outside of the Netherlands, sorry for that. Um, I'm the head of IT for the retail products of ING in the Netherlands, so th- what does that mean? I report to the CIO and I'm responsible for basically most of the customer journeys that customers like you and me uh, face day to day like moving money, like consumer loans, like savings in current accounts, like investments, that kind of stuff. So the engineers building those APIs and front ends uh, for the, the assisted channels and the mobile and web channels, they, they work in my team. That's kind of 50% of uh, how I spend my time. That's my formal job within ING. Then next to that, I tend to have uh, many hobbies within ING. They, they, they are mostly in the field of allowing our engineers to be happier and and make more impact uh, faster for our customers. And that can be around, you know, reducing the effort we have to spend on risk and security controls. That can be about making our teams more efficient, for example, through using SRE practices or team topologies, that kind of stuff for, for people of you who are familiar with that. And one of the hobbies I picked up together with Wolf and some other people is inner source because Let's say that is within ING a very important thing. We are about, I think, 10,000 engineers across the world. And I think it's really nice if we can work together. But the one thing that is kind of challenging us there is that we are spread across all those countries. And then a lot of concerns in a fairly risk averse environment like ING is come to the table like, but can we do that? And risk and security and tax and you know all of that and yeah then we just better don't do it and and then engineers are not particularly happy about that obviously so we started working on that last year uh, to see if we can turn that around and uh, i think then we found out in typical ig fashion we started doing that within ing but soon we found out that other people face similar challenges so really happy to see this community together that that we can learn and share with each other so i think we will give back some of our learnings so far but obviously also hope uh, for your tips and advice to move it on, on uh, further and i think there i give the word to uh, wolf and in the teams bingo or uh, zoom bingo you're on mute wolf Thanks, uh, guys, for uh, for the uh, for the introduction. Uh, I'm uh, Wolf. I'm uh, uh, also uh, uh, working for ING as an uh, IT strategy consultant. And uh, like I said, uh, together we picked up uh, the challenge of uh, inner source. Uh, we are uh, um, practicing uh, uh, a lot of collaboration within ING already for uh, for years. Uh, but cross border, uh, apparently, we have a lot of challenges. And, and we picked it up already from several angles. And uh, uh, um, uh, lately, uh, we decided let's pick it up uh, in one, uh, I would not say last attempt, but in one big attempt to come up with the model for ING to facilitate uh, engineers all over the globe working uh, together, collaborating and, and, and sharing code. Um, and uh, uh, we, uh, for that, we started uh, uh, our inner sourcing journey uh, with an inner source working group. And, and I will take you uh, to, let's say, our, uh, our journey so far. Okay. Uh, is everybody able to see the screen or at least uh, somebody? Then uh, the rest uh, probably also is. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, so in the source uh, at ING, um, yeah, we started as as any other country uh, in in uh, in our IT strategy. We were conver- converging on on uh, on technologies, uh, focusing on uh, you know state of the art technologies, uh, 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 getting rid of uh, of, um, um, of of our legacy, and and because of that, of course. Uh, 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 as uh, we we are a, a federated bank uh, in 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 uh, X countries uh, um, uh, globally, uh, there is there is a lot of of the same needs, and that led to a lot of engineers who are constantly reinventing wheels or uh, doing the heavy lifting over and over again, which again led to an ad- adjustment of our strategy where we said, okay, let's do some centralization of commodities. And let's aim for the creation of uh, between brackets technology platforms where uh, uh, where engineers can uh, uh, um, can can contribute to, uh, and that 
uh, of course, led to increased opportunities for uh, collaborations and, and sharing code. So that is, that is how we started, uh, based on our strategy. Um, in, in these collaborations, um, we were already doing global collaborations. Um, but in the end, we said, let's distinguish two use cases. <clears throat> we have structural pre-agreed collaborations between squads of different countries, which is basically um, you make a pre-agreement that you will work for the next two years with seven squads on a certain commodity or a platform and build it together. A lot of contractual work goes along with that. And uh, along with the contractual work, there is uh, uh, one owner and the others, they get paid for what they contribute towards that platform. That would be, let's say, the old fashioned way of doing collaboration with, uh, uh, within, within ING. But more and more, we see that even in these collaborations, um, because of uh, <clears throat> engineers outside that pre-agreed model uh, also come up with great solutions or uh, can help tremendously in speeding up the roadmap of uh, such a commodity. We see that uh, there's also a need for incidental uh, voluntary collaboration, uh, either via pool requests, but also the other way around. There is uh, code lingering around within uh, ING. And um, um, uh, as said, uh, a lot of others uh, face the same challenges. And wouldn't it be great if they could leverage on the work which is already done and in our code repositories? The second one is especially subject of our inner source journey. So we want to set up a model which is based on uh, people who want to contribute on a voluntary basis or want to leverage on code which is already existing within ING. Um, now, what did we do so far? Um, based on work which was already done and was, uh, uh, um, was, was, was sharpened in, in, in our journey, we defined the guiding principles on how to do inner sourcing in such a way. So where is the ownership? How do you deal with contributions on the backlogs? Um, uh, we uh, introduced uh, models like uh, uh, home and away teams, uh, where the home team is a kind of a, a committing team and the away team is the contributing team. Um, and that we all put on paper and <clears throat> we said, okay, um, at least we have a way of working which facilitates and which uh, uh, defines and makes totally clear how we deal with inner source uh, uh, co collaborations within ING. But uh, there was more to be done because uh, until that moment in time, until recently, I would say, um, different teams, if they were not in our team management uh, tooling, connected together, different teams were not able to look into each other's code repositories. Uh, so we also did a technical upgrade of our team management, where we basically, uh, and that is in the, in the, in the circle, uh, what you see in the, in the, in the screen. Um, whenever you have a team with a purpose, uh, which uh, also gives you uh, a repository with uh, uh, the possibility to add code, you can open it up for inner source. Uh, so you can make it public. Um, <clears throat> for the existing, um, the existing change initiatives, you have to make that conscious choice. Uh, so currently it is all set to uh, not open for public, but a product owner can decide to open it up for the rest of the engineers so that they can uh, read, copy, and contribute code. For new change initiatives, for new teams with new purposes, by default, this will be public. So there it works the other way around. If you don't want uh, other engineers to contribute, then you have to close it. Um, so 
from a way of working perspective and from a technical perspective, we facilitated the engineers to start collaborating. <clears throat> but now the question arises, and, and, and that is also a subject for today, are we allowed to share the code? Uh, because you can open up the porch for everybody, but uh, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the starting minutes of this, uh, this community call, we already uh, were making jokes about tax authorities. Uh, you never know when they, uh, 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 when, they, when they hijack you and say, okay, we see that you are doing things which uh, are not according to our uh, legislation. And that is, if there is code flowing from one border to the one country to the other across borders, then we would love to have some VAT on that code. Um, and if you open up your repositories for everybody, yeah, how do you get control on the code flow? And how can you satisfy the tax authority uh, that you can prove that that value which is flowing across the globe that uh, you uh, you pay VAT for that. So that was our biggest challenge. How 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 to do that? Okay, for that we uh, we uh, uh, we thought of a uh, of a solution, and it is uh, it is basically very simple. It's uh, between brackets a financial uh, model based on the following characteristics. There is, there is one master contract, which basically says, if you sign it as a country, um, that you have a contract with everybody. So uh, via the group, everybody has a contract um, with everybody um, to collaborate and to share code. Uh, the IP of that code cannot be claimed. Eh? It is from everybody within the con uh, company. Um, so that is the, let's say, the legal basis of uh, what we said um, to start collaborating and sharing the code amongst each other. Now, if we are doing that, we need to measure what is flowing across the border. So what we are currently doing is starting to measure the amount of pull requests and copies from one a country to, to another. So we are tracking who is uh, contributing to uh, who, uh, which country to what, uh, uh, to what other country. And we have the metadata to do that. Um, what we also said is, okay, but we're not gonna, um, we, we're not gonna charge every individual uh, oh, oh, by the way, the, 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 the measuring is in the end to charge each other on that value which is flowing across the border. Um, but what we said is uh, it would be a bit uh, 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 over-engineered if we would charge every individual um, transaction which is going on. So what we did is we are building now a kind of a report. Uh, what is, which country is doing what with which other country? The amount of pull requests and the amount of copies are netted and settled. And only the result of the transaction will be charged to each other. So in the end, either you get some money or you pay some money as a country. And <clears throat> The amount of money you have to pay is in the end the net amount of units which comes out of that sum times the standard price per copy or pool request. So it's a pay per use principle. But still, we have one challenge, and that is how do you define that price per copy? Because what we are good at is hiring people and pay these people. That's what we are good at. And that is simple. It is uh, 40 hours a week times the hour rate. And that is what you pay somebody. But what is the value of code? And how to define that? Because that is what we want to charge each other. We don't want to charge people. We want to charge 
the code, the value of that code. And maybe Wolf, if I can add here before you continue. Uh, so one step back is that you now they started with the fact that we want to basically want to enable our engineers to work uh, together across the globe. Um, and actually, we did not start with the idea that we would be starting to charge transactions across the globe, uh, actually. Um, but basically, what we found out during last year is kind of a graveyard of initiatives that try to achieve this kind of way of working within ING and died basically on the whole tax uh, challenge. So there, I think we said, yeah, you know, <laughs> we can try to do the same and try to go under the radar and say, yeah, it's small, it's tiny, it's nothing. So we just do it. Or we kind of say, yeah, if we can't beat them, let's join them. Uh, so I think we, we chose for the latter. So we said, let's just go deep then with our tax friends, with our finance friends, and, and just set this up and, and let this work. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. I think Evolve will elaborate in a bit more detail. I think still there is a concern uh, with us and definitely also in our engineering community, like yeah, how is, is this in some way going to hinder us to, to do this inner source collaboration across the globe? But last year we basically decided, yeah, there is just no, we don't see any other way than to making this financial because all the other attempts that try to differently kind of died in the process. So yeah, we're just going to try this uh, now. Yeah. So, uh, uh... Uh, thanks, Gay. Guys, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, let's first make the change and then make it happen. Uh, uh, and and we can always, as we are agile as well, we can always adjust what we are doing. Eh? So let's start maybe with a suboptimal model and work towards a more optimal model. Uh, but let me get back to that uh, a bit later on. Um, what 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 are now uh, the challenges and the steps we are taking currently? Um, we, we are asking ourselves, uh, we, we, we defined uh, 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 we, 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 we defined the hypothesis that uh, inner source is, is very valuable for, for ING, uh, but, but we also need to figure out, is that, re is that really the case? So what we did is we, we had some resource questions uh, which we asked ourselves, um, and, and basically it comes up to, for are, we, are we touching upon the right aspects of inner sourcing and, and will, will inner sourcing really give us the required value uh, of what we think it gives us? And uh, um, to validate these questions, um, and, and, and I'm happy to share it offline uh, with you what, what the questions are, um, we, we are setting up now uh, approximately 10 initiatives of inner sourcing within IG to test, okay, what is now really important? Is it the code or is it the community? Is it the code or is it the inclusiveness of um, uh, um, uh, 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 the design together, the re uh, building the requirements together, et cetera, et cetera? Um, uh, uh, do, do we have the right way of working model or, or do we need to enhance that or, 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 or even make it a bit more strict? Uh, uh, so, so that is... Uh, uh, we, we are doing these proof of concepts to, val to validate that in the field uh, by, by our engineers. Um, the second, as already mentioned, is uh, yeah, code flow, but, but how to measure it and, and especially how to value that. Um, and, and for that, we set up a collaboration with the research group of Dirk Riele. Uh, so thank you for the community for uh, bringing us in contact with, uh, with Dirk. Uh, last week, we had our uh, first um, intensive uh, discussion on what they have to offer uh, regarding this. And, and uh, uh, what most probably be, will be the next steps is that, that we are going to test and see how the algorithms of the research group of Dirk, um, who pretend to, um, uh, uh, to determine the value of, of code, uh, how that can work for uh, for ING and and uh, and and um, and and should uh, do uh, and and for their for their research perspective, of course, it is very important to know um, does our theoretical model work in 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 a, in a company like uh, like ING. So so that is uh, of of mutual mutual benefit, uh, 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 and and that is already something which we got out of the of the of the community. So so that that's really nice. Um, but but then again, assume that 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 the group of Dirk and ING comes with the perfect algorithm uh, to determine value. 
who do we need to convince that, that, that this will be the model? Uh, do, we, do we need to make an agreement with the tax authorities? Uh, is, there, is there somebody else who we need to convince uh, um, uh, that, 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 that this is the legal way of doing inner source um, within, uh, within ING? Uh, so, so these these challenges we are still uh, facing in our in our uh, journey, and in the end, and that is something uh, which which uh, I, I always put myself uh, uh, as a kind of uh, you know the, the the dot on the horizon. Um, uh, actually, the code which we are sharing with each other does that have any value? Or does it only have value whenever you build it in a product? So um, as for that product where we generate uh, profit with is already um, uh, um, uh, superficial to, to, to tax, could, couldn't we get the, the, <clears throat> the, legal, the legal departments of, uh, yeah, let's, let's start with the European Union so far, that um, inner sourcing maybe should not be hindered by uh, transfer pricing and taxes, but should be encouraged uh, by you know, making that for free, because in the end, it will uh, enable us to deliver our products faster, and as a result of that, make more profit, which, of course, we are happy to pay some some taxes to our uh, tax authorities for. So that is also a challenge, I think, in the long run that we need to take. And maybe we could do that together uh, within this uh, community. Um, but that is basically uh, um, how we went so far and where we are. And um, that's it for me. So I give back the word now to either Christina or to Jesus. So oh, let me share my presentation. <clears throat> Can you see my presentation? Yes. Well, so thank you, Wolf. Um, good morning to, to everyone. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, here today. And, and, and the first of all is to introduce myself. And, and also, I want to apologize because I will have to leave this meeting earlier than than I planned, and I have an internal event, so I can miss. But uh, I'll be available for, for everyone in the in the Inner Source Commons. My name is, is Jesus Alonso, and uh, I'm in charge of the Inner Source Office at, at Banco Santander for Europe. Before this job, I, I have collaborated in, in different projects in, in the field of digital transformation at Banco Santander during the last two years. And a year ago, we started in, in Santander to implement, uh, to develop an Inner Source way of working an, an inner source oriented organization. And uh, since then uh, I'm working, trying to, to, to foster uh, this methodology among, among Europe. Uh, the Inner Source Commons Foundation has invited me to participate in this session uh, to share uh, with you my experience in, in the issue of, of transfer pricing uh, with, within inner source projects. And I'm sure this is a problem or, or, or a challenge uh, that many of us have encountered or, or will face in the future. Uh, so therefore, the, the goal of, of this talk is, is to tell you a little, uh, in a summarized way, um, the way to approach it based on, on my experience, of course. I thought without, without being able to go into a deep level of, of detail due to, to confidentiality issues. I, I hope you understand this point, and, and please excuse me. So. Um, I'm going to try to be brief. I thought grouping all the ideas in, in 15 minutes is complicated, but I'll try. My, my presentation is structured in, in four blocks. First of all, a, a little context in, in what scenario can the transfer pricing uh, dilemma arise and, and, and we should it become as, as a work stream in, in any inner source initiative. Uh, secondly, what does this issue consist of and, and what implication does, does it have? Third, 
how, how to design a solution that addresses this problem without leaving possible gaps in, in legal or, or tax matters. And, and finally, how to be able to measure and, and maintain an adequate monitoring and, and reporting to share uh, software uh, between, in the, between geographies. I have already told about it in, in another community call, I think, uh, but to give you a, a, a bit of context of the multi-country projects, the problem of, 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 transfer, of transfer pricing is, is common in those projects that involve crossing borders. Um, usually, uh, each country uh, used to, to have different, different legislation and regulatory limitation, and, and for this reason, uh, it's a very common issue in, in inner source communities in, in large multinational companies. Uh, also, uh, we must take into account that there are industries uh, such as mine, uh, the financial industry, that are much much more regulated than others, and, and large corporations are usually more closely monitored by, by regulators. So, so being fully compliant with tax requirements is extremely important. Uh, in the case uh, uh, in which I have worked, uh, our goal uh, was to start developing common products and, and applications in, in different countries to, to avoid developing the same, the same things separately and, and multiply it by end geographies. At the bottom line, at the end, the main goal is, is obtain efficiency and achieving synergies in, in technological development. So in this sense, in the project <clears throat> that I lead, we started working on the implementation of the methodology. So working on the different defined worker streams like generating a common platform uh, with everything open by default and, and where everyone uh, could access or, or establishing the defined review and contribution processes, etc. But from the beginning, we knew that this change in the way we wanted to, to build software uh, represented a tax and, and cost challenge. Uh, usually a company that develops, uh, that builds a product, uh, makes an investment and, and includes uh, that asset on its balance sheet and on its finance position. So here arose the, the question about um, something developed by several entities. Who does, who does each of those entities value the asset? And, and this is a very important issue. We have to focus especially on this because, as I have said, the main goal, the main goal here uh, is, is to generate efficiency and, and achieve uh, savings. So if at the same time uh, that savings are made in, in development, uh, the final cost increase, uh, the objective will not have been, been achieved. Uh, well, where is the value? Uh, for the reason and in this context and, and, and within this work stream on, on tax and cost issues, and the first meeting with the legal teams uh, have to appear and, and with the main idea of discussing if the source code has value or not itself, because at the end, the code alone without any integration, uh, without packaging is, was useless and, and it needs an integration layer to, to be packaged, etc., for being useful. Um, but whoever at the same time, uh, um, it must be taken into account that uh, to develop that code is necessary to make an investment in workforce and, and therefore in funding. So that investment in, in development has to be justified uh, with some, some counterpart of, of an asset in the balance sheet. Uh, so here I want to comment also that a possibility that can anyone think is to use an open source uh, licensing model without cost repercussion, but in fact, it, this is rejected by, by the tax experts because uh, this practice uh, between companies of the same business group is not allowed, obviously. So for this reason, in the end, uh, in the end what, what seems uh, most appropriate is to sign some type of contract or, or legal agreement between the, the entities of the countries involved uh, in which it agrees how this construction of a shared asset is going to be carried out. So with, with these commented premises, uh, from the point of view of operationalizing um, the model, in our experience, in my experience, uh, I have mainly identified two scenarios uh, that are in one side, um, where the code is valued according its development effort and with shared intellectual property among entities, and another where the code is, is valued with a lower amount because the intellectual property becomes centralized in a single entity that offers 
a completed value added services on, on the use of the product. So in this case, the, the value is considered in the service in the service instead of the code. In any case, a temporary solution and that can be useful while the service or the product is being developed can be a, what is called a, a beta testing license. This beta testing license, uh, this beta testing uh, agreement solution is, is nothing more than a, a contract between the, the parties through uh, the exploitation and improvement uh, of the product or service is, is allowed between different entities, but with the consideration of providing feedback uh, and improvement on the development of the product. So for inner source, for inner source uh, this fits perfectly. Um, these beta testing solutions um, can be very useful in the meantime, but that the application is, is developed, but and, and, and until it goes to production to be used by, by customers or, or users, but logically, it's not a final or strategic solution, only it can serve as, as a legal and, a, and fiscal umbrella, like, like a bridge, uh, while the final mode or, or scenario is designed and, and implemented. So as I say, to design the final model, most companies can go through any of, of these cases. In, in scenario one, it's built on a shared way and the asset will value as much as, as it costs to, to develop here, and the distribution of costs is similar in each entity, but considering the, the contribution weight of each one to be able to net the cost. Uh, in the scenario two, the option is to create a, a centralized entity which owns the intellectual property. Uh, this entity with the product developed by the countries offers a, a complete packaged service through a license with an equal cost for all participating entities. This service includes not only the product, but also uh, things like trainings and uh, methodology guidelines, project assist assistance, etc. cetera. Uh, here, the, 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 added, the added value for each geography uh, for contributing is not that they pay less, uh, but th that they will be able to, to, to influence more in the product roadmap and, and backlog and, and build it more according to their reason. This is here, this is the, their motivation. <clears throat> well, and how does each of, the, of these models work? Um, in the first case, it's, it's operationally easier, I think, but it's more complex when you have to quantify the weight that each entity has in, in development process. The cost uh, that may be passed on to, to each entity will be the, the result of adding all the development effort, adding a cost per, per user license and, and a cost for the services added by the PMO or, or office that manages the, the project, for example, the inner, source, the inner source office, and distributing it uh, among the, the entities. And uh, as I said before, each entity will reduce uh, their cost according to the weight of its contribution within the product. And in the second scenario, uh, that, that segregates a legal entity from the entities that build the product, maybe another group company, an ISPO, uh, a department, etc., with a legal entity, absorbs the intellectual property and, and package the, and integrates the product uh, for deployment. Uh, in addition, it also offers uh, other uh, kind of support services for the projects uh, or, or the common platform, for example. Uh, here, in, in, in this case, the centralized entity invoices each country for the service, uh, which is quantified based on the total cost of the service and, and supporting of, of the application. And uh, this is a, a more complex model to operationalize since it involves legally implementing a, a model of, of licensing and, and transfer of rights, but once it's working, it's, it's easier to maintain over time. Um, in any of, of these scenarios, there is an issue that is very important, I think, and is um, being able to, to measure the activity and contribution of each entity and, and also the quality of their contributions, of course. Um, in the case of, of the first scenario, it's, it's critical uh, because its activity will be the information that will reduce the cost of the country or, or the entity that, that contributes. And in the second case, it will also be important to be able to report to each entity 
its ability to, to influence the definition and development of, of the product services, but is more important in the, in the scenario one. So for, for this reason, develop a, a, um, a governance and monitoring model of, of the data from the inner source office is, is very important. Um, but also it's important that these metrics are, are available for self-service and, and consultation by, by each entity in order to feel themselves uh, comfortable and, and, try to, uh, and to try to improve. I have said uh, that not only the activity is important, there are other factors that must be analyzed, such as uh, the quality of, of the contributions, um, because for example, there may be cases uh, of countries that contribute, for example, in a smaller number of, of pull requests, but that those pull requests are bigger in code and functionality. So these metrics help us uh, to quantify this contribution, but also to ensure the correct follow-up of the defined, defined best practice. And, and in case uh, those best practices are not developed, such as, for example, uh, doing a small pull request with uh, a maximum size, uh, post, try to improve them. We usually analyze uh, these metrics uh, going from the entity level and, and dipping to the developer level to also identify points of ineffic inefficiency or, or bottlenecks uh, to set action items, etc. So when when we define it, these KPIs, KPIs or, or metrics, and the first thing we, we must do is to identify what objective we want to have. For example, um, analyze the weight of the UK contributions in the project. And based on that objective, um, we establish one or, or several KPIs, such as the um, percentage of total contributions that can come from, from the UK. And, and with those KPIs, we now can build the, the dashboards. So the three main dimensions that can be useful here are, uh, as I said, from, from one side, the, the, volu the volume of, of activity, of course, but also, for example, how contribution and, and collaboration work and, and also efficiency from, from a perspective of the time spent uh, for each process. Um, and here in, in the right side of, of the slide, I have included some, some examples of, of illustrative uh, dashboards of, of metrics. And in these cases, this is a Kibana front based on, on Grimorla, but in summary, any platform that can connect to Git repositories and, and extract data could be worth it. Um, and I would like to end uh, by referring to, to the role of, of the ISPO in, in this entire design of, of the cost and, and transfer pricing model. And as, as many of you already know, and the main mission of, of the program office is to assist and, and support projects on their path to implement inner source to, to the new way of working, ensuring that uh, the plans are accomplished. But we have other tasks, uh, such as the training of, of specific roles or establishing the models and methodologies, etc. And especially this data collection and exploitation in, in order to measure those copies and also specific issues or topics with other areas of, of the corporation of the of the company such as a uh, legal department so here the ispo also we are not uh, of course legal or tax experts and we have to rely on, on those lawyers on, or tax experts to, to design the model we play a very important role as technical and, and methodological support to ensure that the collaboration works works correctly and uh, nothing more. Uh, this is all from my side. Thank you very much for, for your attention. I hope I hope I have been helpful. Uh, so as I say you can you can you can access our inner source portal in Santander and if you want to to take a look and any suggestion will be appreciated. So as I said, I have to leave. I'm sorry guys, but uh, here I, I here is Daniel Izquierdo who is working with us in in the European ISPO of Santander, and we will surely, he will surely be able to answer any question you may have.